Montana congressional candidate uh, Greg Gianforte has been charged with misdemeanor assault after he body slammed a reporter from The Guardian. Now, while some conservatives have come out and denounced that type of violent behavior, there have been some who have made excuses for him. Uh, case in point, Rep uh, Representative Duncan Hunter, he's a Republican from California, and he said the following, it's not appropriate behavior unless the reporter deserved it. Now he admitted later, I did not read the story, I just saw the headline. Well, perhaps you should avoid commenting until you know the facts of the story. But anyway, uh, he's Jay a Republican. Yeah, I know. <laughs> read the story uh, and read books. Now we have some other examples of Jeez, uh, Republicans God. who, you know, gave a very weak response in regard to this story. Let's go to Trent Franks. The left has precipitated this tense confrontational um, approach throughout the country in recent months. You know, it's it's interesting because in some regards, in some regard, Republicans come off as strong, right? They come off as people who are more willing to fight for what they want in policy or, you know, either domestically or foreign policy. But when it comes to people asking them questions, when it comes to reporters asking them questions, they lose it. Like they can't handle it. You know, if there's the, if there to that point, Anna, if there, if there is one good thing to come out of a Trump win, it is this sort of uh, reawakening or insurgence of uh, attitude and drive in journalism, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of seeing such an obvious enemy has mm -hmm. awakened, I think. Journalism in general, not all, some plenty of it was going along fine before, but some of it needed a kick in the pants. And so, mm -hmm. to some extent, what Trent Franks is saying is true, because in his world, the way things have been for 25 or 30 years is the right wing and Republicans have led policy after policy. Sometimes the Democrats have gone along, and rarely have they offered a robust alternative, and right. they've been. We're having a debate about policy in this country that is at best right of center and to some extent is just further right of center. Um, and Republicans have been punching at working class and with Democratic compliance too often, have been punching at working class Americans and lower class Americans and poor Americans for decades and decades and decades. And now in these rallies and in these town halls where people have shown up, they're punching back, mm -hmm. and that's not something they've experienced. So to mm -hmm. Trent Franks, this is a fairly new experience to him because their world has been to punch and punch and punch. And now finally, mm -hmm. when somebody punches back, they say, why are you being so confrontational? Here's what happens, I grab your shirt, I punch you and I punch you and I punch you. I take money out of your pocket, which you can barely feed your kids mm -hmm. with, and I give it to me and my rich friends. And I punch you again, and now you're knocking my hand away and fighting back. What is wrong yeah. with you? This mm -hmm. is not. This is not what's going on. And I'm. I'm being over the top metaphorically, but it is clearly we are seeing a degree of outrage at Republicans. I think mostly, and also at Democrats, for a manner of governing that has gone on too long. That is unquestionably what Bernie Sanders tapped into, and mm -hmm. it is to some extent what Donald Trump benefited for by falsely tapping into it. Mm -hmm. I will say that Trent Franks is wrong in saying that the left precipitated this kind of aggression between the press and you know representatives. Your president precipitated yeah. this aggression along the campaign trail, and it's not to say that there's a causal link between what happened with Gianforte and this reporter and Trump, but he definitely sets the tone from the top, and things like this can flourish in the era of Trump. Right. I, I think. Look, my takeaway from all of this is. Obviously, do not ever resort to violence, don't ever get physical. But don't let Republicans intimidate you. If you're in the media or if you're a liberal, don't let them, or if someone who just has a conscience or, or any, any ethics, don't let them intimidate you from fighting for what you know is right. Because this is their reaction to people who are questioning their authority, to people who are challenging some of their policy proposals mm -hmm. and how disastrous it'll be for a huge chunk of the American population. Don't let them intimidate you. Trent Franks thinks we're precipitating this type of whatever it is. 
go ahead and think whatever you want, right? But they have this amazing ability to act violently, to mm -hmm. disrespect American citizens, journalists, the Constitution, and then turn around and point fingers at us as if we're doing it. No, 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 we're not doing this. We're not the ones that are getting violent. We're not the ones who had a campaign that literally advocated for violence against protesters at rallies, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, what is he even talking about? But Trent Franks, okay, go ahead. I just mean, but to me, the violence, the, the when it's physical violence, when it's protesters being physically violent or or the guards of, of or that you know the henchmen of, uh, of of Republican candidates creating the violence, I think what the the violence that that the have nots are feeling is that we create this giant permanent underclass and that we have created a for a three decades, better than three decades, uh, policies. Which take money from regular Americans and enhance the wealth of the richest Americans as that gap between rich and poor gets bigger and bigger and bigger. There is a degree of economic violence that the, that's what this outrage is. That's what Trent Franks is talking about. He's not talking about violence. Ben Jacobs wasn't violent in mm -hmm. any way, mm -hmm. but he is talking about a aggressive attitude at these town halls. He's talking about, hey, what happened to the point where you guys you just wrote some emails or you made mm -hmm. some phone calls? They are uncomfortable with this wave and and I do not want a revolution in this country the way we see revolutions elsewhere. I want mm -hmm. a legitimate political, I want a sea change in politics. But if folks like Trent Franks and to some extent Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein too, just to use them as representative of, of mainstream Democrat politicians. If they're not careful, as that gap gets wider and wider, you're gonna lose any semblance of control over the, a, a particularly robust and angry set of have nots who will no longer accept as Ben Jacobs represented as a member of the press will no longer accept you not commenting on the most important piece of domestic legislation facing the people in that state. Right. Uh, but for 30 years, they haven't had to respond or they give a nonsense response that doesn't, and their feet are being held to the fire and that's welcoming, but they better wake up or, 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 or this, or the degree of disorder that we've had in this country will rival 1968 or exceed it. Yeah, elected officials for some reason think that they don't have to abide or, or, you know, essentially do their jobs, like because they have gotten away with it for a long time. So now all of a sudden, since people are challenging them and asking them, hey, why don't you represent the people who elected you? And why don't you answer to these disastrous policies that you're signing on to? They can't handle it, right? They, they lose it. Well, guess what? Every other person in this country who has a job is expected to do their job properly. If you don't wanna do your job properly, then get the hell out of office, don't run again. Okay, don't don't rely on us paying your salary so you can continue to not represent us and actually work against us. And I love I love I love the aggression against these elected officials. And again, for the 50 yeah, billionth so time, right. never physical, always, you know, aggressively vocalizing what it is that you're dissatisfied with. I think that's important. If they don't like having their feet held to the fire, if they can't handle it, they shouldn't be in office. Uh, finally, let's go to Paul Ryan and his statement on the whole uh, debacle. Altercations. There is no time where a physical altercation should occur with the press or with just between human beings. So that is wrong and it should not have happened. Um, should the gentleman apologize? Yeah, I think he should apologize. Okay, so that statement by itself isn't so bad, but he followed it with this. If he wins, will you see him? If, if he wins, he has been chosen by the Montana, the people of Montana, who their Congress is going to be. I'm going to let the people of Montana decide who they want as their representative. So he was asked, you know, if, uh, if Gene Forte wins, uh, will he seat him? Uh, and that he essentially said, yeah, we will, because if he gets elected, that's who the people have chosen. Man, I hope Rob Quist wins. If nothing else, then to increase the number of <laughs> uh, sitting congressmen who can play bluegrass music. Right. <laughs> Which I, I'm guessing is, is pretty low. Yeah. Does he play the banjo or something? He plays the banjo. Oh, it's the banjo. Yeah. What did we think it was? I don't <laughs> remember. <laughs> I, I don't remember what I thought he played, but I didn't know. I I, first of all, he may play many instruments. He right. appears to be musically talented. I'm not trying to make fun of Rob, Rob Quist, but playing the banjo is funny. <laughs> Just is. Podcast the Young Turks anytime you want. TYTnetwork.com slash join. I think it's weird. No, it's not weird. In fact,
you'll think. You know, I'm like a smart person. Do it now. TYTnetwork.com slash join.